Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, Body Logics, The Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men. 20% off online stretching programs with eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it, so it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have to get exclusive offers to your sport, and it's definitely worth worth it. So, do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20 takes 20 seconds, so go do it, and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh. He's the co-founder, and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu, and with a bunch of elite athletes. And you learn a lot from like the athletes' determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So go on. I'm gonna leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, current professional hockey goaltender, good friend of the show, and a familiar guest on the show, Packy Munson. Packy was previously on episode 126. Packy is currently playing in the Ligue Magnus in Paris with the Les Jokers, playing in 10 games so far this season, going 5-5. Five and five. Um, Very excited to have Packy back on the show, as he's a great guest and an even better person to have on. So uh, welcome back to the show, Packy Munson. Wow, what an intro! Thanks for having me again, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, intro is for the for the best guests. Like you gotta you gotta spoil your guests there. <laughs> yeah, you're a returning guest. Got it. You get you get the intro. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, Packy, how how have you been? You're currently in Paris right now. So, how how's being in the the city of by Paris? <laughs> yeah, Paris is uh, Paris has been cool. I've been uh, I've played a lot of places. But Paris might uh, take the cake for coolest place I've played in. So it's uh, we're like thirty minutes outside Paris, and uh, it's uh, it's a really great organization, which makes things obviously. Uh, if you ask any hockey player playing for a good organization, makes things a lot easier, a lot better. And yeah, that was a great city, and getting treated the right way, it's uh, it's a good deal. Have play on a good team always helps too. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're outside right now, right? It looks like you're outside. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting on my balcony. <laughs> and that that's a pretty sick view. It, it looks like. So how how's the views in Paris? Yeah, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty incredible. I uh, I actually lived here with my girlfriend this season. It's the first time. Um, I've had somebody with me, which has been pretty cool. But we uh, we get to do quite a bit of exploring downtown, and um, it's kind of weird now. We kind of like know where everything is in Paris, which is kind of cool. So. It's been uh, it's been really cool, really fun, and there's obviously still a lot of places we, we want to check out before we uh, we head back after the season. But it's uh, it's been great so far. Yeah, absolutely. How's what's been like the weirdest thing since you got in there that like you didn't expect Paris to uh, like be like or anything like that? <sighs> you know, I wouldn't say anything's really been that weird. I guess the driving is like absolutely insane. Like. I've always been like a, I wouldn't say aggressive driver, but you know, like I, I get A to B pretty good. Yeah. Like people are here, it's like it's a NASCAR race, like and there's no rule. Like so, there's a there's a spot down right downtown Paris, the Arc de Triomphe, which is a huge like historical landmark, and it's basically just the biggest roundabout in the history of the world, and there's no rules. So like, it's like 500 it's like, cars just flying around, and you just you just kind of got to go like it, it like the first time I remember me and my girlfriend were driving down there we were like stressing out we're like what is going on because there's no lights there's no lines it's just like you get get going and that was probably the biggest like okay well driving in Paris is a little chaotic other than that it's been pretty cool 
Yeah, you just, you just got to go. Whenever you find your spot, even if even if there's no spot, you just got to make room for yourself. Like, not care about anyone else, but make room for yourself. Yeah, for sure. And I'm from Minnesota. Everybody's super nice and, and friendly on the road. So when, when you realize that no one really cares about you at all, and everybody honks the horn here like it's nothing. So it's just, it's chaos. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, it's like, the city of chicago like from the suburbs like it's just easy easy going and everything and then when you get to the city like you have to be aggressive and like you just gotta find oh, yeah. you just gotta make room for yourself and because no one's gonna let you and let you in if you are if you're like more of that laid back guy you just gotta be aggressive so it must be like that oh yeah no chance yeah if you if you're uh, if you're the person letting people go by everyone will drive right by and you'll be a long night for you to get anywhere <laughs> yeah absolutely but uh going into this season like what was it like getting that opportunity or like, how did that opportunity come for you to get to Paris? So I was in this league last year. I was on probably the worst team in the league. If we're going to be honest, like we were like, it was just a tough organization, not, not the most talented team, really great group of guys, but we were, we're very good. So as a goalie, like, the only chance that we had to win games is if it was like a complete steal, like a 57, 63 like you're you're absolutely playing on your mind so I had played against this team last year and they have a really good coach like a really young talented team and um we lost in a shoot we lost in overtime on a penalty shot one nothing and I think shots were like 68 to like 11 like it was like something stupid we lost one nothing on the penalty shot so and and obviously Paris is is incredible but like also we play in like a brand new arena like it's yeah. it's awesome so I just remember like playing there playing against that team I was like wow like I would love to play there next year just because they're a top five team and it's great and they're new so it's it's just kind of a cool thing and I just remember telling my agent that I'm like if I got if I'm gonna come back to this league like, I would love to go to Paris and so it was pretty early into the summer and I was on the golf course and their coach called me and basically kind of offered me on the spot. He's like, you know, obviously you remember you want to my team next year. And I was like, sweet. And there was a different situation last spring when I played every game this year. It's, the other goalie is a national team goalie for France and he's a good goalie. So it's uh, like, we're more of a tandem than anything. And so, yeah. and he's, he's been here for a few years. So that's, it's like, I was kind of the new guy at first and kind of had to earn my, earn my spot of, I shouldn't say my respect, but you know, you got to earn your, your keep. Yeah. And so now it's, it's been pretty consistent where we're playing, you know, every other game or I'll maybe get two in a row here and there or something like that. So it's been, it's been cool. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm definitely happy about the decision for sure. Yeah. That, that's awesome. It's so like, what's it like going into a new team like that? Like they're the goalie's been there for years and then you have yeah. to like earn, like earn your, earn your respect and your, your goal 10, your 10 and like, just be able to just, Get, gain that trust from everyone in the organization yeah um you know it's funny I've been playing on a different team every year since I was since I left junior so that was 2014 so this is year seven of this so I'm getting pretty good at it but um yeah you know it, it's it starts in practice it starts with kind of like, it really it starts as the person you are right like yeah you know being a, I've always been a personal guy. I love to like hang out with teammates outside the rink. And um, I think once, you know, after about a week or so in the training camp, you know, we have a lot, all of our, all of our imports are North Americans or Finnish guys, which our coach kind of purposely did because he really likes them as people. So it, yeah. that part was easy. And it's kind of funny, like guys, like the North American guys kind of right away, you kind of start gelling with college guys you played against or whatever it may be. So you kind of just easily gel to those guys and the French guys, I've been pretty lucky with most of the guys speak English all the time. So it's like, it's not, it's not really an issue. And, um, and then obviously like I, it's always funny. Like I, it's like the first game you play, like you always get so hyped up. So you're just like, you just want to play well. So like guys like, Oh, he's good. Like you don't want to be the guy that sucks. Right. Like, so yeah. I think my first game was right away. Like our other goalie was gone with the French national team. And like our, the top team in our league plays in champions league is, is really, really good. Like we beat them like, three two in a shootout and I had like a like an awesome like a really good game it was like it was like yeah. the first time in front of the fans first game of the team and like it was great and it was actually the first time my girlfriend ever watched me play hockey so it was, it was like a it was like a cool experience right and yeah it was like a preseason tournament so it was, it was pretty cool and I think once like Grace said once you once you kind of can show guys that you can play and then show you're a good guy it's it's pretty easy to to gain that respect and 
it's just kind of being a good team at all the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all, all about being that good teammate and just knowing that or having the guys yeah. trust you and just once everyone trusts you, like you just go out there, have, play your game and just have fun with, with the game and have fun with the boys. Yeah, for sure. And I think it was easy for me too. Like our coach was such a, such a personable players coach and like he, him and I, I really get along well. And it's like, it's kind of the first time in a few years where I've had such a players coach where I really get along with him. We see the game the same, like he's, you know, in practice, you know, giving each other a hard time. Like it just makes, it makes really makes your time at the rink enjoyable. And yeah. like I said, we have a great group too. So it's, it's one of those things when your environment's right, you know, and, and sometimes you can't control that and you got to figure out ways to make it enjoyable. But when you're, when the environment's the right way and, you know, the team's good, it's all like we say, we're a good organization. Like it's, you realize how lucky you are when you have it the other way. So <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of just been taking it all in every day, how, how lucky I am to actually be able to have this opportunity. Yeah. It make, makes going to work fun, makes going to the rink enjoyable and just being able to just play the game that you love and, play play the game that you've enjoyed for forever yeah yeah that's that's for sure yeah so you've played 10 games so far this season going five and five so like what's it been like playing those first 10 games and just being able to to go 500 like of course you want to win more but like you're playing five you're playing really good hockey with going 500 with a really good team like what what's that like yeah it's uh it's kind of funny because my first, I think my first four or five starts were in those like tougher spots where, you know, second game and the back to back, or it was like, Hey, you're playing against the top team league. We are missing a few guys. Like, I'm not going to say I got thrown into the fire, but like, you know, you kind of, you know, you were, I wasn't getting the easy games, but yeah. you know I mean? so uh, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, well, at least give the guys a chance and, and worst case scenario, or best case scenario, you know, you steal a win here and there. So I think my first five games, I was, you know, I think one and three or like one and four, but like I was playing well. So it was kind of weird. Like, you know, I had a good save percent, like you played well, but like, you know, our team, yeah. we didn't really have it, you know, just didn't have it that night. But then I kind of got on a little run and won four in a row or whatever, playing well since. So it's, um, yeah, you just, you know, when you're playing on a team that can score, we're, we're, we're young, we're skilled, we're fast, but, you know, we're, we're very offensive minded. So it's, you know, Hey, if we give ourselves a chance in the third, we're going to, you know, we could probably put a couple pucks in that. So you just kind of want to give the guys a give a shot in the third period and make those key saves. And when that's happened, we've, uh, we've been pretty successful. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, what's been like your favorite part about playing in the Les Jokers organization, just being able to be there and enjoy all your experiences and time with the boys. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think the easiest way to put it is that there hasn't been any day that didn't want to go to the rink. You know, there's, yeah. and, and I'm not saying I've ever been someone that doesn't like enjoy going to the rink, but you know, there's times and sometimes you play in teams or organizations where it's like, hey, there's an optional skate. Hey, there's certain things you got to do with it or whatever. And you're just like kind of bummed out where here it's like, you know, anything that comes up, it's like sweet, like perfect, like love it. Like, hey, like today we had like an optional skate. It's like, absolutely like going to be there 100% because you just enjoy it so I think that's that's probably the most like the perspective part of it where it's like you got to enjoy it when you play on teams and for, for organizations that where it's it's fun and it's enjoyable and it's a it's a atmosphere that revolves around you know getting better and winning and that's kind of all you ever want to do right yeah I love that you gotta like your passion for the sport and passion for the team. Like no, there's nothing better between those two. And like, you want to do anything you can for the guys in front of you and just try to get your team a win no matter what. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is your, uh, like you said, your seventh, seventh year pro now. So like what, what has been like something you learned this year that you like haven't learned or like haven't fully like learned before? Um, good question. Um, well, I kind of, like I mentioned earlier, this is my, this is my first time actually living with, you know, someone, especially I'm living with a friend playing pro. So it's, it's actually been a great like change for me in a sense, because so when, you know, I came home and 
kind of just did your own thing and you know some bad games you'd come home and just kind of sit by yourself and kind of be upset you know and you didn't really have anyone to talk to or you know yeah. just that stability part and um I think the best part for me is that like when I come home from the ring and she's here it's like I don't I can kind of shut it off a little bit like I don't really think about hockey all the time and obviously there's times you're going to carry it home and you know games and stuff where you're frustrated or super happy like you're going to kind of carry that with you but it's kind of been nice to be able to kind of shut off hockey every once in a while and um, go to different things with her. And, um, you know, I've heard that in the past, like guys saying like their best hockey they've ever had is when they actually got married and, or they had kids because like, it's not that hockey's like second in line or anything like that, but you know, there's more important things in real life. And so it's, it's been a cool experience for me. And um, I, yeah, it's definitely something that I, I, I love and, and happy to go through. Yeah. And it like gets you away from the game. Like you said, and like, you're when you go to the rink the next day like you're you're refreshed like you didn't think about like overthink about anything you're just going there just to play the game and not not get distracted or overthink anything right yeah and she cooks so it's nice (laughs) yeah absolutely so uh, what going into like before this season like summer like obviously it's like off-season training so like what were some of the fun things you did during the summer to uh, like help maybe get your get, get your mind off the game before you went full into off season training? So this was a weird off season for me because I actually didn't have any gear. The uh, the team I played for last year took all of our gear. <laughs> it was a bad organization. That happens sometimes in Europe because you get the wrong teams. Uh, so I didn't play goalie all summer, which was weird. I, I played it a couple times, not using like my own stuff. And, like, I'm not that picky about my gear, but, like, yeah. it's, like, stuff that doesn't fit. So, you're, like, okay, like, this isn't going to work. So, um, I didn't play goalie until about two or three weeks before I headed to camp. And I worked out a ton, and, and I, do, I do a lot of coaching, do a lot of goalie coaching, do a lot of, you know, you know, I do forward skills coaching and yeah. um, coach a couple of youth, youth teams. So, I, I do a lot of coaching. That's what I'm doing when I'm playing. So, I, I really enjoy that. And, um, yeah, it was it, – for – as a goalie, it was – it was interesting doing a lot more um, teaching, like not just coaching on the ice, but like guys are asking a lot of questions about, you know, off the ice and, and doing a lot of video of like actually teaching the game. It actually had helped me kind of, I think maybe a little more of a student. And I've, I think the last few years being pro, and I think I remember listening to the decor that you're lucky to have goalie coach and pro sometimes. So, yeah. and I haven't had many. So I, it, it's good to kind of be your own goalie coach and, and in the summer is, you know, work on the mental side of it and kind of learn the game a little more and see watching the best guys in the world do what they do and wonder why and try and put it in your own game. And so I think for me, yeah, it was definitely mentally. And um, yeah, I think just, like I said, just kind of learning the game and, and watching some of the best guys are like watching Vasilevsky a lot. I watch guy like Vasilevsky is my favorite goalie to watch because I think a guy that's that big, that athletic, who likes to be aggressive, which I've always felt like that's how I like to play, but just, you know, watching what he does and why he plays certain situations the way he does, I think, like, and being able to try and teach that to younger goalies has really helped me kind of think more about my game and what I'm playing. So it's, it's been good. It's been a different kind of summer, but hope the next summer will be back in the skates a little more. Yeah, that, that, that's, still, that's still crazy how they, they kept your gear, but, like, I've heard stories like that where they just keep your gear in you gotta get like a whole new a whole new set and like what was that adjustment time like just to uh, get your get your gear back or like get new gear and just be feel comfortable in it especially since you didn't skate until like two to three weeks before you went off you went off to camp yeah well the story behind it was pretty funny about how we got our gear stolen like it was we're at the end of the year barbecue which was like really weird like we didn't do stuff like that you know and then it was like all right end of the year barbecue hour before the barbecue our gm who was just not a great human being i just didn't he's just you know just weird you know and just kind of very selfish and just not a very it wasn't a gm the the story started it was the end of the year we had a team barbecue which we never did stuff like that like it was really odd yeah and our gm was just an interesting guy i was not a huge fan at all and neither were a lot of guys but so we get a text like hey team barbecue five o'clock like you know we're gonna have some burgers and beers whatever send off the guys we're like okay fine yeah and it was like 30 minutes before we're supposed to be there he's like oh yeah by the way bring all of your apparel and anything that the team gave you 
and like we're thinking like are we talking like t-shirts and like you know hoodies that we sweated in and stuff you know and yeah and then they're like if you don't bring your apparel like you're not going to get paid we're like okay uh, interesting like, you're, gonna my, you're gonna have my sweatshirt back like okay um and it wasn't like it was a nice stop like it, you know it wasn't like okay. oh no i lost my nike vapor you know it's it just yeah. like weird random europe brand so we get there and we're at the barbecue and i'm like yeah i fly out tomorrow like i'm gonna grab my stuff and they're like oh yeah like everybody's stuff's locked away we're like okay well i leave tomorrow and they're like yeah yeah it's locked away <laughs> so we're getting like, it back yeah and so like i'm like kind of bickering with the guy i didn't speak any english so i'm like translating and i'm like you know what the what the hell you know like I, I, can i get my skates like stuff and the stuff is stuff i bought like my yeah. I kept my helmet. I bought my helmet and paid for the painter because I wanted done there. Like they didn't have, like they offered to pay it, but I like want to keep it. Like, you know, I want yeah. my own helmet. You know, I like having the helmet. So and I had like my sister and like my, you know, my newborn niece on there. Like, it was just like, why are you keeping my helmet? And so it was super messed up. And yeah, so that's how I lost my gear, but it's just, yeah, that's, that's your for you. You can stuff like that happens and you can't really do anything because you're flying out the next day and they sell it and make money off you. And that's what it is. So you had to get every, everything pretty much new then. Yeah. And, and, and the nice thing here was like our, like I said, playing for better organization. It was like, we're sponsored by CCM, which is stuff I've always really liked. I had to use other gear last year, yeah. power, which I didn't look a huge fan of, but um and they just said whatever you need and so they had to tow with ccm and it was all custom and what i wanted so it was good yeah that that's uh at least you're playing for uh an organization that probably won't that hopefully won't keep your gear take, yeah like, no take it they, away. Made it, they made it clear that you could keep your gear at the end of the year because it's a year old used gear like nobody needs that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely and like you have you have some pretty sick sick gear this year it's like what went into like creating like all the gear especially the especially the the bucket like that your that paint job was sick ah oh, thanks man um i've always taken like a lot of pride in that like it, it is obviously like most school is enjoy you know yeah. the gear part and the helmet part um i suppose for the gear i've always been pretty loud with my gear like i, I can remember like in vermont i had really like all yellow pads and even last year i was all red um and it was just kind of a weird time. I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna switch it up. Maybe just kind of go a more classic, like pro look, if that makes sense. Like more yeah. white. Um, I like how the design came out. You know, this little red and green on there, so it looked good. And then the helmet, I took a lot of time with. Um, obviously, Dark Knight's my favorite movie of all time, and putting Heath Ledger in there was a no-brainer. And the artist did kind of a cool rendition with them lifting the mask, which I thought was pretty sweet. And other side, just did you know the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre and. Uh, yeah, I just again, just always it's always cool to put you know my grandpa's name on there, and um, I guess I put my niece on there and my family's name on there. So it's always it's always great to kind of do that stuff, and it's one of the best parts of being a goalie for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's like what what would that rank in the mass that you've had painted? Like what in top five? Like what are we talking? Oh, it's I think it's number one for sure. I, the, the Heath Ledger part kind of put over the top. I was I was I was kind of putting it on, on every social media thing, and when I got it, because I was pretty fired up. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And as you should, like, that's a sick mask. You gotta, you gotta show off your gear when you, when you need to. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So like, what's your like top five painted masks that you've, that you've got done like throughout your career so far? That one, this one's probably number one. Um, I had a, I had a pretty cool one last year. Like it was, I've had the same painter since I was at Vermont. Um, she did her mask that year. And she, it's funny because she's, she's a great mask painter but she always asks me for what I want and like I get like one thing and she does the rest and it always looks way better than I thought but like I, I'm like at first I'm like I'm like bummed like oh it's not what I want and then she does it and I'm like okay that's way better than what I wanted so that one was good my Vermont one was really good um I had a pretty cool one at Denver um I was actually the only time I had a different painter but we had just a lot of different stuff on there that was pretty sweet and I actually had like the Jonathan Quick mask which I thought was pretty sweet so <laughs> Yeah, that's that that's sick. Like what like that's the best thing about being a goalie is getting your mask painted and just being able to have that creative side that a lot of, that you wouldn't see if you weren't a if you weren't a goalie. Oh, for sure. And I think like I said, I, I've always taken pride in just because you know, the look good, feel good, play good is you know, some people believe in. I definitely believe in it. I always called it fabric confidence. So I've always tried to make sure my gear was looking pretty sharp. 
Yeah, that that's my uh, go-to line: look good, feel good, play good. Like that's. Oh yeah. It's all, all about that confidence too. Like you have you have Absolutely. confidence, like you're you're gonna play good. Like that's key to being being a successful goaltender and a successful athlete in any any sport. Like you gotta have that confidence. Yeah, it, it's actually kind of interesting. Like just to go off that confidence thing. Like I've never really thought about it too much. Like that part of it. Like I've always felt like I was confident in my abilities, you know. And, yeah. And it's just the more you learn about the guys that like either really like end up making or guys that I thought were like definitely should have made it that were talented enough and it is crazy like the guys that really really believed in them like their own ability like and sometimes it comes off as cocky like they're like wow this guy yeah. really he's, he's awesome but like i mean those are the guys that make it like it's crazy like i like i one of my good buddies he's just when he was younger i thought he was okay you know he's good but you know he thought he was really special and he just he never had a doubt in his mind what was going to happen and sure enough he's playing in the nhl now and, freaking gets laugh so it's like dang okay well must have worked out for <laughs> yeah yeah having that having that like cock, cockiness and confident like that that's huge especially if you believe in yourself like that's like if no one else is going to believe in yourself you might as well believe in yourself the like throughout through the roof like as much as you can like just believe in yourself and like that can get you far but i, I, I mean i'm it's not even like a, like a secret. I don't think, I think I've told most people or my goalie coaches or whatever, but like, I mean, there's been times, I know like my first junior game, like my first college game was like, I was a wreck. Like I was a college, like, I had no confidence going on. I was terrified. Like I remember calling my dad the night before that game, I was shaking. I was so nervous. Like, it was just like, I don't want to suck. I don't want to get embarrassed. Like I'm not ready yeah. for this. Like, and I, I think in multiple points of my career like I heck I can go back to high school this where it's just like fake it <laughs> like, like just it be like make just it yeah like that sounds dumb but like you have to like you said if no one's gonna believe in you like like the only person like you have to you have to express that you are confident in what you do and like you have to carry yourself in a certain way like that where like I even when I didn't I just carried myself like I did believe myself that it was no question and I spoke that to myself like you know, and it, it's amazing how that sometimes can be success, like be successful for people. It, it, it's, it's helped me out a couple of times where I just said, you know, just kind of lied to myself, be like, no, nah, you're ready. Like, yeah. you're, like, no worries. Like, this is easy. Definitely wasn't yeah. easy. <laughs> it's definitely pretty yeah. hard. It's yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And it's just like, once you believe in yourself and have that like confidence to you, like, and just fake it till you make it, like you say you're ready and like, it's amazing what the brain, how the brain can trick your trick everything else to making you think that you're ready for whatever task right. you're about to you're about to like have and like be successful at it. Like it's it's crazy how the mind works and like how it can like change change just like a snap of a finger of the fingers. Oh, for sure, and I mean, and there's no substitute for hard work either. It's not like you can just yeah. not work hard or get yeah. just tell yourself you're good, but like yeah, if you know you worked hard and and yeah, those you know if the other team your first whatever game junior game college game pro game it's like you know sometimes you just have to just tell yourself you know what you're this is where you're supposed to be you're good to go you're gonna do great and just tell yourself that it'll work out <laughs> yeah you just gotta you just gotta trust your trust your training as well like that's a huge one like if you believe in every believe in yourself believe in everything you do like you're gonna be successful at one point or another yeah and I think it a part of like when I became a pro and even like I said, the last few years is like, I'm just kind of getting older and like actually thinking about the position because I don't think I really knew what I was doing until I was a freshman in college. Like I, yeah. I just tried to stop the clock. Like I didn't think that much. Like I didn't know really, like I would watch guys on TV and I would just do it. Like I didn't know why I did it. There was no explanation. And so like, I remember I got my first goalie coach, my first year of college and like he, taught me what like why to do things and like it sounds really dumb but like I was able to make it there without doing that so then when I yeah. kind of put that all together and that's probably the few years I've had an actual full-time goalie coach I felt like that was me my best year of hockey because it was like oh I had a game plan I had this you know a coach that was you know believed in me was helping me out like thought that I was you know was giving me confidence so it's it's really interesting how that can how that can be really a part of your development is understanding why you're doing things, understanding what you do well. And um, I think I'm constantly doing that stuff where now it's, 
you know, I, our, we have a bunch of, you know, live camera feeds from our rink that are great, you know, overhead from the scoreboard right on the net. And I'm like, I, yeah. I'll have our coach say, Hey, send me the last 10 minutes of practice. We're doing power play. And it's, you have to learn from watching yourself. And, and it, it's, it's been, a, I think a big part of like why I've had success this year is because I'm constantly actually trying to understand what I was doing wrong instead of just saying, Oh, I got B glove. Well, why? Like how? Like, yeah it's 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 been beneficial for me and that again when you do that sort of stuff and you you really understand what your game is that's where that confidence comes yeah absolutely and like same same here like i got i got this far with with no goalie coach then over the last year like i've i have like my full-time goalie coach and like it's just amazing how like that development part can change especially like how you get to where you are just being your own goalie coach and just watching youtube or anything like that and then you get your own goalie coach who actually like believes in you and like is teaching you why to do stuff and why you're doing this why go in the rbh at this time like stuff like that and then just having it like develop into your game throughout like the games that you play and then just to see how far you come especially from going from your own goalie coach to your own to your actual goalie coach like it makes it makes a huge difference especially for how you're playing the game right and i and I came not from a hockey family at all. Like I, you know, I think I talked the first podcast, like nobody in my family ever yeah. played hockey. I basically been winging it since I left high school because nobody's really been there. Like, I don't mean in a bad way, but like no one has any yeah. experience in my family about this stuff. So um, I think it's really interesting looking back in my career and like decisions I made where all I knew is I wanted to play. Like I, when I switched teams or went places, just cause I, I just want to play. Like I didn't care about anything. I just want a chance to play because I love to play and I love to compete. And like going to the university of Vermont was a huge thing for my career because like I said, we had a full-time goalie coach and I didn't have that at the other college. Like I, when I was at Michigan tech, we didn't have a full-time goalie coach. And I think I remember like just how much it developed in that first year. Right. Yeah. Like, like I said, I was when it came to talking to NHL teams and get invited development camps and, and kind of feeling noticed. And you're like, okay, like this is how development should be. And, I don't have regrets about anything in my career or anything, but it, it is, it is something now where I think back and the advice that, that I give my kids or their goalies is, you know, taking control of your path. And if there's a place where you're going to get development and you're going to get coaching and you're going to get that help, like it's crucial. And I think the guys that you see, you know, we were talking earlier about uh, Joey Decourt, a guy I played against in college, who's now playing for the Kraken and played for Ottawa. Like, he's a, a great example of a guy that just developed like crazy. And in college, he developed like crazy. His dad's an amazing goalie coach and, and Joey's obviously a fantastic goalie, but like he's always developed at like with high level coaches and high level training. And it's paid off for him because he's also a super talented athlete as well. So it's, yeah, yeah I think that's something that, yeah, kind of know how we got in that path, but it is interesting to think about. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, what, like, are some of the things that you've learned from goalie coach? Like what you like your key anchor points are to like, keep you, keep you focused in the game when, when like everything could be going, like being chaotic, like a game could be, or like if, or like you just want to settle in, like, what are some of the key anchor points that you're going to say to yourself to help you bring back that focus? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's almost sometimes separate. I, uh, like I said, in college, I actually was, I worked with a, a sports psychologist and it's amazing how like those, those people are really talented and, and they're, mm -hmm. they're really helpful. Yeah. And it's something that I, I, I've actually lacked the last few years and I wish I, you know, had that access as easy as I did back then. Um, and I think now as I get older and I, I, I Curtis McElhenney has been doing a lot of posts on Instagram about, you yeah. know, anxiety and stuff and, and it's weird as I've gotten older, I've had, like, I've thought more about the game and I get those pre, like, before the game anxieties where I'm, like, nervous, where I never really was nervous. And, I, like, I overthink a little bit now. And, um, and I remember meeting Garrett Sparks when I was at Chicago Wolves, their training camp in the American League. And I had, a lot, like, a long talk to him that day just about the mental side of it and, like, how that, like, we kind of were talking about it with confidence. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I think with goalie coaches, like, it's good to have them with your on ice tactics and, you know, kind of like those game plans in certain situations. But I mean, you, you're talking, you get really lucky if you have a goalie coach that really understands the mental side and, and really can kind of set your mind right. Like I know for me, it's, it's always been pretty simple. Um, like I just try and set my feet, 
and try and track the puck and and then when it comes to battling just kind of let your body take over but um yeah I mean like nowadays like I said as I'm getting older and I think more about the game and and yeah like you need to have a very simple mindset I think when you're thinking too much I think that's really hard to play hockey when you're thinking too much I think for me I've always tried to center around set your feet and just track the puck and um I think it's when you can kind of simplify the game for yourself that's when you're going to play your best yeah absolutely and like just saying same here like the the mental side is huge because like I I think it's more more mental and physical than anything else because once your mind like goes all over the place like that's when that's when your game goes all over the place and like you're not like you're getting lit up like the you're getting sun you're getting sunburned from the from the lamp behind you like stuff like that like but like when you are like in control of your game and like keeping everything simple like that's when the game goes right and like it's easier for like obviously the position is not easy but like it makes it more simple and more easy to stop pucks when you're not overthinking or anything like that. And like, so my keywords are like, keep it simple, like stay relaxed. Cause if you're relaxed, you're going to make a relaxed controlled save. And like, you're going to put the rebound in the corner, like no rebound at all, just stuff, stuff like that. And like, also like take command of your crease. Cause your job is to keep the puck out of the net. And like your crease is the, like your home, I guess you could say, and just being able to just keep the puck out of the net there. Yeah, I know one of the keys that my sports psychologist taught me was just the entire game was before my first college game. She just told me to say the whole game, just tell yourself next shot. Like, don't worry about anything else. Just keep like, and I think I said it 15,000 times in that 60 minute game because I was so nervous and I didn't see a shot the first 10 minutes (laughs) or 10 minutes. I'm like, next shot, next shot, next shot. (laughs) Like, just worrying, just wanting to make the next save, right? And um, yeah, I think like those little, those little tools are actually super helpful when it comes to you know, the mental side of it and, and just staying focused. Yeah, absolutely. Just next shot mentality. Like that's your, that's your job to stop the, stop the puck from entering the net. And just the next shot. Like it's all, it's all you, you got to stop it. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And yeah, it, and I think understanding what kind of goal you are too. Like I, I had gone through a transition period when I was in college where, you know, my freshman year, I was, and I, up until my freshman year, I was always been a goalie that like, had character like it was emotional like I like I played with emotion and it like, helped me stay in the game and I went through a period where it was like I don't think like that's it sounded dumb but I was like I don't think NHL scouts are gonna want a goalie like celebrating like I again and it, it's dumb to, dumb to think like what NHL scouts want because I think that was maybe the wrong way to think about it but it was just you know I want to make it so bad so like what do I got to do and I tried to have like a very calm demeanor but it just wasn't me and like even to this day yeah. it just was never like I wasn't a guy that could just stand there and be still like I always had to be smiling had to be getting excited have that emotion that's when I play well and so um I think over in Europe that played a little more and it's it's more accepted and um obviously playing well you can not say get away with that but yeah if you're getting lit up but you're having look like you're not caring like you're having too much fun it's like well you know maybe worry about stopping the puck before you start you know looking like a clown out there but um no it's it's definitely interesting kind of doing that self evaluation of what kind of goal you are what's going to make you successful and if that means always being centered and always being very calm nothing gets you if it means being emotional it means being emotional but just kind of whatever makes you successful yeah <clears throat> yeah absolutely and it's just like like char- everyone everyone loves character especially in especially over in europe like just like with the soccer style fans like you gotta have that style and that <clears throat> that like that character like we said and just be able to just enjoy like enjoy the enjoy the moments this uh the small moments and the big moments as well and just be able to just enjoy every part of the game especially if you're if that's how you play well like you just got to embrace that still your performance doesn't doesn't fall well and i think that kind of leads into like interesting conversation when it comes to like professional hockey especially in the united states like when you're on a contract if it's american league contract a coast contract nhl contract like you're rarely on one team for the entire year yeah. and and that's that's hard and I think it's something I never thought about and when I when I dealt with it I hated it because you're you just kind of are playing for yourself like it it, it, it really sucks like you could lose one nothing and like you know you just kind of at the end of the, in pro you're like well I you know I did my job I had 26 saves and like good for my save percentage where yeah. I think that's when 
you start to play worse because you're worried about your stats or you're worried about like and, and it's not wrong just worrying about doing your job like that's not really the point like I think why I felt like I've had a better even since I left college because when I played in the coast like I, I really struggled with that like I just really struggled not being close with teammates and when I played like getting scored on it wasn't so much about letting my teammates down or letting the team down it was like constantly telling yourself like I let myself down or like I'm ruining my opportunity like I think that's where it it can get really hard and so I I've always felt that I've played better when I am playing on a single team with guys that I know aren't like getting traded or you know getting that you know maybe some guys will leave or get you know whatever move up or move down but for the most part you have the guys that you're playing for them like I know like on this team like when I win or lose it's you know, we won or, Hey, we lost. Like, it sucks that I lost because I let those guys down or when we won, it's like, like, I'm so happy because we, like we won. And so, you know, I, I, you hear a lot of guys talk how, you know, that it's tough for goalies in North America. I mean, obviously when you're in the NHL, it's great. If you're consistently in the AHL, okay, it's fine. But I mean, you see those rosters, you got seven new teammates in the entire year. It's like, you're not, you're not playing for each other right and until playoffs come and then okay now we're kind of all bought in right now we're not going anywhere but um i think that's kind of like an unspoken part of being a pro is it's such a fine line between playing for yourself and playing for your team and i think when you can have a healthy balance with that like obviously you want to play well because you want to you know grow as a player but yeah. when you're playing for that team dynamic or that team aspect of trying to win i think that's when you see real success happen yeah, there for sure. There's a there's a lot of movement over in North America. Like, like you, you get released from your contract, like traded, like, like it's pretty much a day to day contract, pretty much, especially in the coast and all that. Like, you don't know what's gonna happen the next day. Like, you could be like, cause like that trickle down effect. Like, an NHL contracted goalie going the AHL, and then the AHL goalie contracted gets released or gets sent to the coast, and then if you're on a coast deal or anything like that, like you pretty much lose your spot and then get released from there. So it's like, it, it, it's all about movement over here. And like, it's and just, it's chaotic and crazy. Yeah. And I know guys that do it every year and they, and I, you know, they're freaking warriors, man. If you can, if you can, I know one of my best friends, Evan Moyes, he's, he's doing it right now. He started with the just Blue guys first pro shutout too. Got his first pro shutout. The guy's the best. No, he's uh he's an awesome guy, but he's, I mean, he what was his story last night. He, he was, he got went to go back up in Cincy on an emergency basis, drove 20 hours, backed it up, left, then drove to Knoxville, then played a game, then went up, went back down, played a game, got a shutout. Like he's going, he's doing the, you know, he's doing the grind, which is awesome. And, and I, I think everything will work out just because I think he works so hard and he's such a great guy. And, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not for me. I, I did it one year and I, between the time when I, there was a day where I got cut in the morning got a car ride to back to Indiana and got in a flight, landed in Minnesota at nine o'clock, got told that night I got re-signed and I'm starting tomorrow in Utah. It's like, you know, what, you know? And then it's like, I land in Utah, throw my back out, carrying my hockey bag into the rink. It's like, what is going Like, it's just, it's crazy. But then, you know, there's guys I know that like a guy, I know Tyler Parks, he's worked his way up from the SP to the coast. Now he's, you know, he's playing American league games for Belleville. Like he's, it's, you know, it, it's giving yourself opportunities. And I think that's why guys do it. And I know that's why I went back and did it once. And I learned it wasn't for me. So I'm going to probably keep kicking it over in Europe. But um, yeah, it's it's a different, it's a different dynamic doing that. I, it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It just depends on, it depends on the person. If they like, just like, however they feel, especially like going, like grinding, going place to place, 20 hour drives, to, like, all that 20 hour drives, 19 hour drives back, like stuff like that. And then just, or just stay in one place and over in Europe and just being able to stay on one team and not worry about the movement. Well, yeah. And there's, yeah, there's job, like job security, right? Like you're in the coast. Like, like I remember I was in the coast with two NHL contract goes from two different teams and it didn't matter how good I was playing sometimes like, Hey, you're at, Oh yeah. You're playing great. You're playing better, but Vegas is here tonight to watch him. So yeah, you're not playing this week. It's like, Oh, okay he's like yeah we might cut you this week but then we're probably gonna sign you back on friday it's like oh okay like it's like like and it's weird like it, some of the coast coaches are some of the best guys but they're in such a tough spot with that stuff and 
yeah it's a, it's a revolving door and you you just try and make the most of it but it's yeah europe there's a little yeah. more job security that you know you're gonna get get paid on friday so it's it's kind of more yeah. up my app. <laughs> yeah and it's just all all about what everyone's comfortable with because it does get crazy a lot like especially now with like nhl taxi squad coming up coming up again like there's yeah. goalies going all over the place and just players going up and down constantly. And it's just, you're, you don't know what's going to happen on a day to debate day to day basis. Cause three guys can move up today. Then later tonight, they could get re signed in the, in the a or wherever. And it's just a constant, constant movement up and down. Well, yeah. And then you throw COVID in as a wrench, you know, like I think it's Columbus. They just had Elvis was out and then Tarasov got hurt. So now they have Corpusalo as their only guy. They don't have a backup in the NHL, and I don't think they have any goalies with Cleveland. So it's I got buddies in the team that were in a group text, and they're like, "Yeah, we just don't have any goalies." <laughs> it's like you guys are in the American yeah. team. Like, that's just how fast it can turn. And if you're in the right organization, get the right opportunity, make the most of it. Yeah, doors can open for you. So it's 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 amazing how that works. It's crazy. Yeah, and some like affiliations are a thousand miles away. So then you got to worry about getting playing to get the guy from the coast to the A and then all that. Yeah. It's just and, and crazy. They, 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 they're kind of starting to figure that out. Like, Hey, maybe we shouldn't have affiliates across country. So it was like the Kings were with Manchester. Manchester is in Boston and, you know, Boston to LA, if you got called up, it's just not realistic. So I think, I think teams are a little bit better about that now, but yeah, they can be, especially around the road. I know the craziest thing and the best advice I was always told was like, carry your passport with you because there's been guys that I've heard that missed their one chance to play an NHL game or missed a chance to get called up to the American league because they didn't have their passport on the road. And Hey, we want you to come play a game Sunday for the Marlies. So I don't have my passport. Well, all right. See you later. Like, and that's it. Like never got a call again. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Crazy craziness and a uh, crazy, crazy world we're living in right now and experiencing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. But uh, this has been a lot of fun, but uh, how we do uh viewer, viewer questions that, that uh i got responses from for uh to wrap things up here okay so uh the first one is what's been your favorite place to eat in paris Ooh, okay um favorite place to eat in paris that's a good question we've uh we've tried quite a few spots i'm also very very picky like i'm super fussy like there's like i won't try you know I, I, we, we'll go out to dinner with my girlfriend with teammates and oh they'll get like the duck or the snail or try all these things and i'm like yeah like i'll do the chicken yeah finger. no like, okay. i ain't doing that but there's a place that's uh it's a smokehouse and i mean it's like an american smokehouse i feel like it's like you're eating nashville with all of like the you know brisket stuff so I, that's been like our favorite place yeah, that's that's on un, that's unreal. It sounds sounds really really good. And uh, the next question was like, what's your been your favorite moment in Les Joker so far? And I think we touched on it, but like you said, like just being around the guys, right? Yeah, being around the guys, and um, like I said, we got a great group. We've been able to take a trip. We went to Spain together. We had our first like Olympic break, so we took a little trip to the south of Spain, which was really cool. And in the beach just kind of relax a little four-day break was nice but yeah it's it, it's it's amazing how when you play for a special group just how nice it is and how how enjoyable it makes the game and how you can just kind of focus on little things you know <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely and then uh the next question is like what's been like your favorite favorite landmark of, of Paris like uh Eiffel Tower the Louvre like what what's your favorite favorite landmark Eiffel Tower was pretty spectacular. We went down there the other night for New Year's Eve and went down there for like the drop of midnight. And it was like, it's crazy. Like, you know, stuff, you know, I, was, I remember talking to my grandpa and he's like, you know, people would kill to do that their whole life. You guys just get to do that by driving down the street. So it was, that was pretty cool. And like some of those experiences, like going to the Louvre, going to Eiffel Tower, going to see all these crazy landmarks, like, you know, we can do that in a day. It's not really a huge deal. So the next thing I want to see is the, the Omaha Beach from the World War II um, D Day. That's the next thing that we're gonna try and check out. So that's pretty cool. Do you have a, do you have a list of things you want to check out and just you? Oh yeah. Check well, check those things off whenever whenever you go and do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My girlfriend's on it all the time. She got the TikTok and shows us all the good spots. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's funny. And then like the last questions, like 
what's what was your first impressions of the Eiffel Tower when you went there? Uh, it's pretty breathtaking. Like it's I, I've heard mixed reviews going into it. Like some of my buddies like, ah, it's okay, whatever. But I it, to me it's like especially at night with the lights and just all the people that are around there, it's it's pretty breathtaking and it's it's hilarious to see if you go like there's one road that kind of leads right to it and there's like it's like all girls and couples or whatever like standing in the middle of the road with the traffic getting pictures because they want like a <laughs> and they like, go we'll be driving by and like you got these people risking their lives just to get the good angle you know and there's like yeah. some guy in a knee like this you know trying to get the angle and it's like you guys are absolutely insane like it's 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 so funny do it, do it all for the gram. That's yeah, that's what yeah. it comes to it that nowadays. For the yeah, risk your legs for the gram. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh Packy, this has been so much fun. Thank you once again for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. And I, I want to wish you the best of luck going forward with Les Jokers for the season. And I look forward to following your career the rest of the way. Uh, thanks, buddy. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs>